Everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. We're going to be tackling a topic today that I got an idea for just after reading some blogs about A Song of Ice and Fire, another series I enjoy quite a bit. Uh, the topic of the blogs were the seven wonders of the world in the Game of Thrones universe. And it got me wondering, what are the seven wonders of the world in the Wheel of Time universe? If you aren't familiar with the concept, the ancient historian Herodotus who lived from 484 BC to 425 BC, made a list of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The list was of the most famous and incredible man-made structures in the Mediterranean area, which was the known world for him. The list included the Colossus of Rhodes, the Great Pyramid of Giza, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Lighthouse of Alexandria, the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus, the Statue of Zeus at Olympia, and the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus. These were said to be the most wondrous man-made objects or buildings in existence at the time. And this list has sparked numerous other lists over the years as new wonders have been built. As recently as 2007, this list has been updated to include wonders from all over the world. Given the fascination with wonderful man-made structures and buildings, I figured it would be fun to think about what the seven wonders of Ranland might be. This video is going to carry a spoiler warning of yellow, with maybe some tinges of red. Uh, there are going to be mostly minor spoilers, but there may be a few times I will mention events that happen later in the series. If you have not read the books at all and do not want any kind of spoilers, you may want to click away now, but I'm not planning on giving away anything huge. So let's talk about the criteria I used to pick my list. I basically decided it needed to meet six different standards to be considered for the list. Number one, would it have a wow factor if we saw it in person? Number two, it must be iconic to the story. And number three, it has to be a one of a kind. So no repeat towers and then multiple towers. And number four, it must be constructed and man-made, not naturally occurring. So it can't be just like a, a really cool, uh, you know, forest or something like that. Number five, it can't be of the shadow or associated with the dark one, as most people would not be real excited to see that. And number six, lastly, it it won't be like entire cities, but rather individual objects. There are some cities within the novels that is, are described as being marvels and of themselves, but we're going to limit the scope of this to just individual objects or buildings or statues. and So they can be inside cities, but not the city itself. With that being said, let's dive into our list in no particular order. The Stone of Tyr is a massive fortress in the capital of Tyr. It appears to be almost a mountain and is of one solid piece of stone at the edge of the city. It is the seat of power in Tyr and is the oldest surviving stronghold in the world. It was built at the end of the breaking of the world with the purpose of housing Kalendor until it could be drawn by the Dragon Reborn. The High Lords of Tyr have taken to living inside the structure and it now stands for the symbol of the power of the High Lord. The structure itself is said to be the second tallest man-made building in the world, trailing another one of the wonders on our list. It was built by Aes Sedai using the one power to fuse the stone together without joints or mortar. It is a massive structure, taking up a large part of the city of Tyr and able to stand on its own even if the rest of the city was taken. It is a self-sufficient citadel and it has its own water source and docks. The Stone of Tyr houses the heart of the stone, the location that Kalandor hung in midair until it was taken by the Dragon Reborn in fulfillment of prophecy. The stone also houses the Great Holding, a massive collection of Terangrial and Angrial that is said to be almost as great as that of the White Tower. The Stone of Tyr is such an intimidating fortress that it was never taken until the Aiel and the Dragon Reborn took the stone at the beginning of the novels. The Stone of Tyr and its massive size and its incredible reputation make it a a certain inclusion in our list of the wonders of the world. The White Bridge is a massive bridge that spans over the Aranel River in the nation of Andor. For more details on Andor and the White Bridge itself, be sure to check out my cultural profile on Andor, where I dive into the culture, geography, economy, and the structures of Andor. I'll have a video linked at the end, and you can find it in the description below. But the White Bridge is the most famous bridge in all of the Westlands, and it's not just for its strategic placement. Yes, the bridge is the only crossing of the Aranel all the way up to the Blight, making it strategically 
and economically important, but the structure itself is incredible. The bridge looks to be made of impossibly fragile white glass, but it is so strong that a chisel and a hammer will not even dent or chip the structure. Having been made with the one power, and supposedly dating back to the time of the Age of Legends, the surface has properties that make it unique. Other than being just strong, the surface of the bridge will never become slick, not even in the hardest of rain, despite the glossy and smooth nature of the bridge. The sheer size of the bridge awes those who see it for the first time. While residents of the large city that sprung up around the bridge may take it for granted, those that come by boat or road and see it for the first time are left in wonder staring at this wonder of the world. The Tower of Genjai is an enormous metal tower about 10 days north of the White Bridge in Andor. It sits off of the River Arenel and is used as a marker for river traders to tell the distance to White Bridge. But that's not really what makes the tower famous. The tower is made of seamless and spotless metal with no doors and no windows, and it rises nearly 200 feet into the air. For almost anyone who gazes upon the tower, they are left with a sense of wonder and curiosity as to what the tower is and who built it. It is said to date back further than even the Age of Legends. What is not known to most is that the Tower of Genjai is a doorway into the world of the Finn, in other words, the Aelfin and the Elfin. Although there is no visible door, if you draw a symbol of the game of snakes and foxes on the outer wall, a doorway will appear and open, and you can enter the world of the fence. The tower is visible in the world of dreams as well, but most are cautioned not to enter it as it is all but impossible to escape. While certainly one of the lesser known wonders to most of Rainland, it is certainly a marvel and a wonder worthy of our list. Now yes, yes, this is the title for the first book in the series, but the Eye is a pool of untainted Sidene that lies in a cave in the home of the Green Man. The Eye of the World is deep within the Great Blight, protected by the power of the Green Man and his ability to push back the Blight and grow the nature around it. The Pool of Sidene was created by a hundred male and a hundred female Aes Sedai after the breaking of the world to leave a reservoir of untainted Sidene that can be used at a later time to seal the Dark One's prison. All of the Aes Sedai that cleansed this bit of Sidene were killed in the process, but they tasked the Green Man with guarding the Pool of Sidene and the other objects that lie in the Eye of the World, most notably a seal in the Dark One's prison, Luz Theron's dragon banner, and the mythic Horn of Valir. The Eye of the World makes our list due to its legendary place in the hearts and minds of adventure seekers in Ranland that disappeared into the Blight to find the Eye of the World. Supposedly, you could only find that place once, but Moraine Damadred was able to use great need to find it twice, being the only known person to do so. The Eye of the World being the only place at the time to find untainted Sidene, and the mythic objects that resided in the Eye, gave the Eye of the World a spot on our list of world wonders. The most iconic building in the entire world, known by name almost to anyone regardless of whether they've gazed upon it. The White Tower is the most known and most prestigious building in the world. It is the seat of Aes Sedai power sitting in the middle of the greatest city in the world, Tarvalin. Aside from the influence of the Aes Sedai, the building itself is a marvel. It is the tallest building in the known world, reaching a height of over 600 feet. Having been built by Ogier stonemasons and considered their finest work, the tower rises above a city full of other tall towers. It has almost 50 floors, and the White Tower can hold up to 3,000 Aes Sedai in the tower alone, not to mention servants, warders, novices, and accepted. The seven Ajas have their own quarters within the tower, and there is a great library as well. The White Tower was commissioned to be built very early after the breaking of the world, as what remained of the female Aes Sedai came together on the island of Tarvalin to establish their seat of power. They commissioned the Ogier to come and build the city, and with it, the White Tower itself. Construction on the tower was started in 98 AB, or after breaking, and it was not completed for another 104 years, finally being completed in the year 202 AB. Since that time, the White Tower has served as the home of the Amarlin seat and the Hall of the Tower, and it has controlled thrones and seats of power across the world. The mere mention of the White Tower exudes the power of the Aes Sedai, and it very much earns a spot on our list. This may come as a surprise on our list to some, but these enormous Sa'angriel absolutely earn a spot on the list of wonders. The Chodi and Kal are the two most powerful Sa'angriel ever created. They were made in the last days of the War of Power as the Age of Legends was coming to a close. They were made for the purpose of closing the Dark One's prison. The Sa'angriel were so large that the statues themselves could not be used without burning out the user. So two access keys were created to enable a channeler to safely use the massive Sa'angriel. Now no exact measurements are given, but 
but it can be inferred that these statues are incredibly large. The male statue lies mostly buried near the town of Tremosian in Kyria. The hand is sticking out of the ground holding a large white sphere. The hand is said to be 20 paces across, which if you use the measurements given for the Wheel of Time, a pace is equal to about 3 feet meaning the hand itself is 60 feet across. The arm of the female statue, sticking out of a cliff in Tremalking, is said to be more than 50 feet long. Proportionately, then, these statues are most likely hundreds of feet tall. This would be an incredible sight. The mere sight of these statues would inspire wonder. The last on our list of wonders is something that at face value you might not consider fitting our criteria, as it is just a large volcano that's seemingly naturally occurring. But Dragon Mountain is actually man-made, being the death rattle of Luz Theron, as he drew more of the one power than he should have been able to and killed himself. The sheer amount of the power that he drew caused an enormous volcanic mountain to emerge in an area that had no mountains. Dragon Mount is the tallest mountain in the known world, spanning many miles into the sky. There is speculation that Dragon Mount may be almost 10 miles high. It is also an active volcano, as it is said there is always smoke rising from the peak. At its forming, it rerouted a local river and caused a large island to form in the middle of the river and created the Isle of Tarvalon. It is said that no one has successfully climbed to the peak of Dragon Mount and that it would be impossible to do so. Dragon Mount is not only the place for the death of the dragon, but it is also the place where he was reborn as and Althor, as he was born on the slopes of Dragon Mount after the Battle of the Shining Walls at the tail end of the Aeol War. Dragon Mount is surprisingly man-made and very impressive to gaze upon. So that's my list of the seven wonders of Ranland. Did I get the list right? Is there anything I left off? Please write your list down in the comments below as I'd like to see if I missed anything. Also, take some time to check out my video series on the upcoming Wheel of Time television show. We currently have two episodes in the series with another one on the way here shortly. We're taking a look at what are some of the challenges facing the production team, what the budget for the show will look like, and what kind of content is going to need to be cut, and some basic predictions and news on the series. You can find a link to that playlist at the end of the video on one of the boxes around here. But if you do like my content, please hit the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell right next to it so you can be notified when new videos release. I'd love to keep growing the Wheel of Time fan base and get the community discussion fired up as the new show approaches. Hey, thanks again for all your support, and I'm hoping to get content released more often and more regularly. Hey guys, until next time, take care everybody. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free cry. And Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?